Okay, so we're back in the shop with the uh, Vapor Hooning Technologies uh, Vapor Blast Cabinet. And um, I want to start today's uh, presentation off with a little bit of talk about what a Vapor Hooning Cabinet is not. Because we've been talking about how incredible this machine is, and I only learned through my process to manage my expectations of what the machine is. What the vapor hunting cabinet is not, it is not a dip tank. You should not expect to put greasy, shitty old parts into that tank and have them come out looking like this. It is also not a paint stripping tank. You should do your due diligence to remove the paint, whether you do it with a, a chemical stripper like aircraft stripper, or if you're going to put it through a, a bead blasting cabinet before it actually enters the vapor hunting technologies cabinet. Now, there's a couple reasons why one of the biggest things is this is not a, uh, a tool where you can change media super fast so if you want to go from a really coarse media down to something that's going to get finishes like this here it's a, a lengthy process so with that in mind we're using a fine media we want this to be the last step so we want to go from you know the traditional soap and water and degreaser over to the parts wash tank wash it again, take it into the sand blast cabinet, or the bead blast cabinet, bead blast it down till you get to this finish, soap and water again, bring it over to the vapor blasting cabinet and, and look for our finished product out of that. Um, that all boils down to saving media, not ruining the media, or uh, your, your uh, closed loop system will skim off the debris, they call, like to call it, the dirt. Uh, so if you put something in there real dirty, uh, you're going to use up media, you're going to kind of spoil the media. Uh, the nicer these are when you go in, the faster you're going to do them in the uh, vapor home. So a big question everybody's going to ask them is, is this something that I really need? Um, depends on what you want to achieve, you know, for, for a restorative finish, you know, that you're the guys out there, you're doing your old pan heads and knuckles and stuff, the old British bikes, you want to get to a, a restored finish of, of the material. Absolutely. Chopper guys and custom guys, you want to take it that one more step you can see right here. These are the, the difference between the finishes. This is a bead blast finish. You can see it's still dry and porous um, coming out of the vapor honing cabinet. You can see that it's it's almost it's almost polished. I mean, it's really... A, it's a slick finish that we were concerned about when something's this nice, your mechanic has greasy fingers, he's gonna leave a print on it. But unlike a bead blast finish, there is a big difference. What you're gonna do is feel it, and I'm sure these are gonna clean up nicely when your mechanic finished. This really shows the difference. When we put the first head in with nothing else cleaned, we said, well, what's happening? You know, well, we finished this head and put it next to this head. And, and I mean, even look, even at, and yeah. the, the brass components that were left yeah. in the head, it, it polishes that brass right up to everything. You guys can see the, the kind of finished results we're getting from this. Um, these have both been done. But we're gonna kind of push it a little bit and like, you know, what would happen if we just put this whole thing in as it sits and see the kind of result we get from that. So here we go. That's gonna make it easy to move around too.
Just so nice and our, our transmission this was a test that we did of putting the whole transmission right in you know just pulled this out of the bike cleaned it up you know i sat with a little stainless steel brush and removed all the debris put it in that cabinet and it comes out like this and we we made the joke that you could get extra 200 dollars at the swap meet for this <laughs> right, just, right. just by running through that machine but it's true it's nice and you know really from a mechanic standpoint if you want to work on something even taking that little bit of time to clean it up, put it through there, and yeah. now I'll put this on your bench, yeah. take it apart. You're starting with something that's not such a pain in the ass to work with. Um, your mechanic will love you, even if you don't do your own mechanical work. Your mechanic is going to be real happy. I'll bet you get a better price when it's all done. So let's talk about the, uh, the process that you went through because you actually set this up. The last time we were here, we did an out of the box real quick and said, okay, we're going to come back and, and take us through a little bit of the setup what what it was and what the, the different components are and we'll get over there and show some yeah the, va the vapor hoon uh company has a, a wonderful uh website and it shows a fellow taking one of these out of the crate the exact model uh and once we watched that it was just a few minutes it was really easy you know? and uh, of course we incorporated the closed loop system uh we've kept it on the pallet right now so we can move it around uh, the shops and we, we moved it off the side a little so everything will fit on the pallet. So with 110 volts and an air hose, uh, you're in business. It's incredible. So you were saying um, with that closed loop system, there's there's two hoppers and obviously the one that's at the bottom of the cabinet. The media, main media falls into the bottom of the cabinet. Yes. But then that closed loop system, the water drains off to the top hopper first yeah. and that's where it gets that ability to skim off any of the, the debris right. from. Which you'll see uh, little lightweight debris floating on top and that's actually dirt you, you uh, blast it off. If, it, if there was much to it you could skim it off with a little skimmer but it, uh, we've done all this stuff and uh, it's still really clean. Um, you really don't have to add water to the system other than for a little bit of evaporation. Say it sits in the shop for a week, uh, you might evaporate a little off the top tank, but the uh, uh, it just doesn't go anywhere. Uh, if you had a big shop and you, you're using these machines eight hours a day, you'd probably plumb it into water and then have a drain somewhere. Uh, but for the uh, small shop, the restores, the custom builders, this is just right. You leave it on that that skid, move it around, and uh, it, it's incredible to use. Uh, Chris and I are both used to a bead blaster, and one thing is you can see what you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> man, I'll tell you it's what. like crystal clear because you got a windshield wiper and you're working with water, and you can see everything, and it's neat and clean. Um, and it doubles as a flow bench. Yeah, so, yeah. We, Chris stuck the hose in uh, here, <laughs> and he flowed the head. This huge cabinet is, is um, timing circuits for the windshield wiper and for uh, how long this stays on or how long the little pump stays on for your rinse cycle. These are real clear in the book, but you really don't have to touch them. I mean, everything's just right. It's an incredible piece of equipment. Uh, the, the workmanship and uh, the building of it is, is really incredible. This just vents off. No, it's no water, no debris. This just this is an atmospheric vent. When you open the door, uh, water and debris will, will drip off the door right into there, and then it's returned to the tank. One thing you want to remember when you get one new, and this is very important, water first in the hall. The instructions will tell you to fill it up to um, a certain level. They'll show you real clearly where this one uh, drain comes out. Water first, okay, then dump in your 25 pounds of medium, okay, and then it will mix clear. Uh, if you dump the medium first, bone dry, and then you dump the water in, you'd probably have a, a time of uh, waiting to get the sludge to move. So water first, always, whether you change it or it's brand new. Uh, you're looking for that originality. Old old British bikes, old old uh, Indians, old Harleys, you know, this is as 
probably close to what they look like when they were new. When I'm, I'm really excited too on the custom side of things because I can't tell you how many times, just like you said, I've gone through the whole process of cleaning some of these perfectly with a bead blaster as nice as I could. And then in the process of putting them together, it's, you know, they get they get a little junked up from fingerprints and yeah. stuff. And then by the time you're a, a couple months into riding this motorcycle, it, it doesn't, I'm, I'm really excited to see how this weathers, if it weathers the way that it did from the factory, you know. So it'll be it'll be uh, additional reports as we go on here, and and it's important to say this has still only been one media. This is a, a fine media. Yes. So it's only this one media that we're we're working with so far. We're using a one seventy two thirty five uh, glass media, and it's really fine. When we opened the box, we were kind of surprised as it, it was almost like talcum powder. So we're just using that fine one. Uh, once we learn about the other grades perhaps there's a faster or different finish or whatever but this is really clean really nice and to do a transmission that's assembled oh. uh, you know there's absolutely nothing wrong with this transmission other than cosmetics and plugged up everything drained it and uh, set it in there and look at it you know nope. well, that just saved hours and hours of work until next time this is this is chris and ed, and ed. from grease and gears garage and uh Get out in the shop and do something. We'll see you next time.